everybody. So I thought I'd take you guys kind of like in the day in the life of what I do as a data scientist and a data engineer. But I wanted to answer one main question, which is how can I be both? So my current role and title is a senior marketing science analyst. At this digital design agency, I would define marketing science goes into three different pillars, where you have data engineering, data analytics, and data science. Typically, when you're at a digital design agency, you are catering to multiple different companies, multiple different industries, and so you can't necessarily put a data engineer on multiple accounts or a data analyst on multiple accounts because of that conflict of interest. You have the ability to learn all different pillars depending on how big your team is. The bigger the team, obviously you have different skill sets that you can tap into and you probably will have one of each in your team. But let's say in the case that you are catering to a new client, they only have the ability to have one analyst to start with. That analyst will start to have to think about these the services that they have to cater for the data engineering part, the data analyst part, and if they're mature enough, they will also be delivering some data science tasks. When I first started at the Digital Design Agency, I was on a smaller team, but I was also very interested in using my programming skills, which ended up uh, putting me into the two buckets of data engineer and data science because Python was my primary language of use. And in data engineering, you use some Python, SQL or SQL, um, but also in data science programming, you can also use Python. Some cases are. When my manager saw that, then I was given opportunities in each depending on what need was at the time. In the beginning, it was a lot of automating the data ingestion using Python scripts, but then near the end, uh, we were getting towards the annual reporting, and so I was put on a project to do some regression models for their forecasting for the new year. And so that kind of set me up in this position to learn both facets and have a little bit of experience in each bucket, which I really enjoy. The next topic of interest is what data am I exposed to? Well, primarily I'm in marketing, so these are split into two different buckets, whether it's website performance or media performance. Let's talk about it in the circle of life of what you see when you're browsing on social media. So we'll start off with media performance, like your Instagram feed, Facebook feed, even if you're on Pinterest or even on Google searching for something that you want you'll see an ad, which will have a few different metrics that are tied to it. First being how many impressions, so how many people actually saw that ad, to did someone click it, did someone share it, did someone comment on it, and so forth. And so this is different on every platform, optimizes for something different, a, like a Google ad, search ad, versus a Facebook ad. It's primarily text-based on Google, versus on Facebook you could have a static image, you can have a carousel, you can have a video, and that also plays out into what type of metrics you're able to capture from that platform. When you go into those, you can do some performance-based metrics on, well, how many people saw it and also clicked, how many of those clicks ended up creating a site visit on the landing page. And then that's when you get into the website performance where you're most interested on what pages are viewers going onto, that into a funnel effect of, well, there's these many people going to this site, which is 
the upper funnel, just visits in general. But you could also put segmentation on that if the visit is more engaged with the content and they actually took an action or interacted with some function on the site. So that would be your next tier down. And then you can take it a step down further to create something like a conversion visit where they filled in a form. We now have a ways or a means to uh, contact them, uh, especially on automotive sites. Typically you fill out a form to visit the dealership to test drive a car. Or if we have an e-commerce client, then we can actually get into the nitty gritties of if we actually made a sale from that visit and that would have a dollar value to it. So a little bit more information and granularity if the site has the transaction already built in. Some of these you can get out of box clicks, impressions, site visits. What we do is create some more depth to those metrics and cater it to each client. A qualified visit on an automotive site is gonna be different than a Lululemon or a Ritzia. A client that has an app might be interested in app downloads versus a client that is just purely trying to promote their brand and they're just looking for more reach so that they can grow their audience later down the road. So their business strategy and their intent for their ad campaigns might differ between the two. marketing science analyst. I am a data scientist and data engineer in marketing and these are some of the concepts that I typically tackle on a day-to-day -day basis. As I was making this video, I realized that there's some concepts that I definitely can dive into deeper. So if you're interested in that or content that you'd like to see, comment down below and I'll definitely put it on my list. But with that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!